Welcome to Cult Corner, I'm Astron. And I'm Inferno. And this evening we have a review of the cult classic Deadly Dreams. Yes, this is made in 1988, directed by Christine Peterson. And this and this plot's basically about um, a kid he's um, hanging out with his family and it's Christmas time. Christmas time and he's waiting for his older brother to get home and stuff and, and he hears a knock at the door and he opens it and then this guy comes in with a gun and blasts away mom and dad. Yeah, it was and, like a business rival of his dad's. And then t tells him like, you know, um, he puts on a wolf mask and like, well, you have so and so seconds to get the hell out and I'm going to find you. And so he runs yeah, out the door. Yeah, a game of hide and seek sort of thing, and he yeah. goes running, and he eventually escapes the guy. The guy ends up shooting him mm -hmm. his own self. Yeah. And then it goes clip, you know, years later, and he's like not quite an adult yet. He's like in college and like almost gonna be like twenty one or something. Mm -hmm. And he still has like horrible reoccurring nightmares about you know this guy and getting killed. I mean, some of it's like. Total, like almost like script, you know, play by play of what happened to his parents, but some of it is just really off the wall stuff. But it's always involving mm -hmm. this guy who came and killed his parents. Yeah, and then when he wakes up, he swears he keeps seeing this guy all over the place, even though the guy's dead and he knows the guy's dead. Mm -hmm. And then you find out that he has done a bit of a stint in a little mental asylum because you know he kind of couldn't really deal with, yeah. The killing with his parents and this, that, and the other. Yeah, because he has like constant dreams, yeah. flashbacks, and whatnot. Nightmares of just, you know, being killed in different ways by mm -hmm. this masked man. Yeah, and um, you know, he tells his best friend about it, and his best friend sort of like laughs it off, writes mm -hmm. it off, sort of like, oh, you know, you're such a loser, basically. And yeah, he thinks he's just making it up. Yeah, and he thinks he pretty something. much just needs to get laid. Yeah, <laughs> so he takes much. him out of this bar to try to help his friend out. Yeah, and his friend help out a brother. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, then he goes up to this woman, and it doesn't work out too well at the time. But yeah, you know. but it does actually in in the end. But it doesn't again. But yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So you know, he ends up running into this woman, and they actually end up starting start dating and stuff, and whatnot. And he's all happy with her. The the friend thinks there's something wrong with her. From yeah. The get go. He's like, mm -hmm. I don't know about this girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he's like, oh, shut up, you're just jealous, you know, I got a girlfriend, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But he's still having these horrible dreams. Mm -hmm. And he goes and sees his brother, his older brother, who was missing at the time mm -hmm. of when the parents were shot. I mean, not missing, missing, but, you know, he hadn't gotten home from wherever he had been. And he goes and sees his brother, and his brother is this very successful businessman who took over the family business after dad died and mm -hmm. whatnot. And he wants him to invest in the company yeah. and everything because he is going to be coming into a lot of money right. when his birthday hits. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. I might want to do something else. You know, I don't really care about the company that much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it, he's not really sure about it. You know, it's not really a flat out no, but it's like, mm, yeah. I don't really want to do that really all that much. And so the brother was kind of disappointed about that. And then uh, while that's going on, his his uh, he's starting to see like um, people um, in the real world, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like a guy in a, in the wolf mask, like peeking around a tree, and mm -hmm. you know, following him in certain places. Yeah. Um, he's seeing, you know, and he's questioning questioning his sanity. Yeah, you know, he's starting so to, to think speak. he's starting to lose it again until his friend actually sees the guy too. Yeah. And the friend sees the guy, but by then he's like. No, it's, he's not really there. It's you know all in my head. Yeah, and stuff. The because his like, friend actually, when he was looking through his uh, his clo his friend's closet, um, he found a wolf mask. Yeah, and, and he thought that the friend was you, you know, know kind of playing a joke on him or him something. And stuff. Yeah. But the friend's like, no, no, I swear, I see him. He's like right there, yeah. and he goes, oh, okay, yeah, I'll look. And by then the guy was gone. Yeah. So. And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, you yeah. find out that there's. The girlfriend is not as great. A girlfriend as you would think she yeah, his is. His brother's not so great either. And, um, the and, not and so basically, great. this is all about greed. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. And uh, it has kind of like two twists in this movie, which mm -hmm. I'm not going to say. Yeah, um, we don't want to give it. that part away. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty cool slasher film. Um, one of the uh, cult 80 slashers that finally mm -hmm. got a uh, cool Blu ray yeah. released by Code Red. And this was made actually quite. Quite cheaply, I think it was what like four four hundred thousand dollars, and this is a Roger Corman production, so he was involved behind the scenes, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, 
director was a woman, um, yeah. which is kind yeah, of rare for a horror. Harrison. I mean, yeah. there's another one who did um, Summer, uh, Slumber Party Massacre, mm -hmm. too. Um, another one, one of But, yeah, favorites. there's not that <laughs> many, like, yeah. horror movie directors that yeah. are women. Or in general, but it's yeah. just, like, especially in horror movies, yeah. you know. Yeah, and she, she uh, had a really good time uh, directing this film. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, she tells her experience working with... Uh, Roger Corman and you know how she enjoyed it and basically um, how he really wanted to get a tight or have a tight budget going. Yeah, I mean after this. this movie, you know, he was like, "Well, this came out this good at four hundred thousand. Let's one, do the next, next one at three hundred thousand and so forth." You know, yeah, so. and there finally came a limit to where it's like, "No, that's getting too low and yeah, it's getting it was, really bad." Yeah. <laughs> and so it was like, "Okay, well, three hundred and fifty thousand is my limit now." Right. Alex, which is the main guy, is played by Mitchell Anderson, and he was, uh... They said he was in Party yeah, of Five. Yeah, they said he was in Party of Five, but I think he was, like, a friend or something, because he wasn't one of the yeah, main Yeah, like, guys. he didn't have a major, like, role. He, was, yeah. he just kind of came in cameos here and there in the series. Yeah, and his best friend, Danny, was played by Tom Babs, which also happens to be the writer mm -hmm. of this. And I think I've seen him in other things, too, like, when he was a bit older. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, he has a familiar face, so... And then the girlfriend, Maggie, was played by Juliet Cummings. Mm -hmm. And the big brother was played, Jack, was played by Xander Berkeley. Yeah, and he was in Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah. The guy who played the yeah. big brother, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, this is uh, double-sided art again. I love the double-sided art. Yeah, it's cool. Um, Code Red is starting to do this, um, which is cool. Um, I actually like this one. Yeah. The inside better, personally. Yeah. I like that graphic oh, better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Mm. And I hope they keep continuing to do this. Yeah. And this has some pretty decent features on it. Yeah. Um, it has, like, an interview with the director. It has three interviews. Yeah. Uh, one with the director, one with uh, the star, mm -hmm. and... Then um, kind of the guy who was in the wolf costume, yeah, or the wolf mask, or yeah, the wolf, yeah, the guy who played the wolf guy, and mm -hmm. he just wanted to do it, and his like he just wanted some money, basically. yeah, basically, mm -hmm. and, and like and at first his agents turned it down, and he yeah, was like, "What like, are you talking about? Yeah, no, call him back." I want to be in a movie. I want to be in a horror film, and I want to do this, and you know, you know and they're like, "Do soap commercials?" He's like, "No, I want to be." <laughs> yeah, dude, soap commercials. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but, um yeah, it's. <laughs> It is what it is with that. But for being a slasher, this thing isn't really too bloody. There's no. not a lot of gruesome kills on here. No, in fact, most of the kills in it are in the dream sequences. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's a good film. Um, and it's great that it's finally out on Blu-ray. Mm. Um, it's been in, like, bootleg hell forever. Um, you can find, like, VHSs would pop up half the time on eBay for crazy prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to have this. Um, you can get this at Ronin Flicks. Um, they have a lot of cool Code Red releases, uh, Scorpion 2. Um, as well as you can get this on DiabolicDVD.com. Um, so, yeah. Um, and this is pretty cheap because um, you get free shipping on their on the Ronin site. So, you know, and they're having like a, a little bit of a sale. So, yeah, you pick this up for a good price. And don't get the ones on eBay because... They're like twice the price nearly than the retail, and that's just crazy. Yeah. And it's not on a print yet, so you don't need to pay the extra cost of the bullshit that goes with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. Pick this up. Really good. Uh, so, what are you going to rate it? I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. 7? No. Okay. I am going to go a little smidge lower than you and say 6 and a half. But it's, it's, it's better than a lot of slashers. It's got yeah. more intelligence than a lot of slashers. Yeah, it slashers. does have that. You know, um, like I said, it could have been more bloodier for my taste or mm -hmm. a slasher, um, but it's like it was inventive enough. Yeah, and sometimes enough. the dreams got like a little tedious. Like, yeah, like they're they, just reoccurring all the time. Yeah, it's like it was kind of half tiresome. the movie has dream sequences. Yeah, be, if, you know. maybe over that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so I mean that got a little redundant yeah, after so. a while, and that's why I gave it a lower score because it's like, dude, okay, we get it. He mm. has dreams. Yeah, the acting is good for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, direction is good. Um, yeah, so check out kind of a long lost slasher obscurity. Yes. And we're going to get down in here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hail, Hail the horror. horror.
beyond the veil of sleep. Somewhere between truth and deception lies the world of dreams. For Alex Tormi, it is a world of deadly dreams. Alex? It was just a dream. I keep dreaming about this hunter. And then I wake up and I see him. What if he kills me before I wake up? It says in the books that if you die in your dreams, you really die. You never wake up. I know it sounds crazy, but I just don't know what's real anymore. You get too stressed out, man. You like games, don't you? This one's called hide and seek. You run and hide, and I try to find you. Run, boy. Haunted by treacherous delusions, trapped in a web of inescapable horror. Now, when the nightmare ends, Maggie! the terror begins. Deadly dreams.